What's up, Viking Work fans? I'm here with the new YT Izzo. It's their first short travel bike that they've done. They're more of a gravity-focused brand in the past, but they wanted to offer something for trail riders that is honestly kind of most of us. So this is a 130 mil travel bike, front and rear, with a very low slung appearance, and it's their first four bar linkage suspension design. So let's take a closer look at some of the details real quick, and then we're gonna get out on the trail and show you how this thing rides. The first thing you notice about the YT Izzo is just how low slung it is. The top tube slopes dramatically and lines up perfectly with the rocker arm and seat stays, giving it a sharp aesthetic. Contrary to YT's bigger bikes, the Izzo needed to climb just as well as it descended, so they gave it really short chain stays and a wide, squared down tube and oversized BB junction to help keep the bike really stiff under power. The Izzo is their first bike with a 4 bar linkage suspension, putting the shock in a vertical position rather than horizontal. It has a flip chip at the top to let you adjust the geometry slightly. The shock is inverted, putting the heavier part at the bottom, along with the rebound adjustment knob. One much appreciated feature is a small drain hole, letting any water move out of the pocket that captures the shock. The rear shock lockout is controlled by a RockShox twist lock remote, albeit one that works in reverse of how it was designed since it's operating a Fox shock. A race face remote lever on a race face bar and stem operates the Fox transfer dropout post. On top of that is a custom branded STG radar saddle that was reasonably comfortable on multi hour rides. The rest of the build for the Pro Race model includes SRAM G2 brakes and an X01 Eagle 1x12 drivetrain. While I appreciate its ease of use, I rarely use the lockout and would prefer the ability to install more comfortable grips. YT bolts on a rubber on metal chain guard across the entire length of the chainstay and uses a mechanical guide to keep the rear shift cable above the bottom bracket so you won't get any elongation during suspension movement. It's specced with massive 180mm rear rotors and 200mm front rotors, belying the brand's all-mountain and Enduro roots. 130mm Travel Fox 34 factory fork matches rear-wheel travel for a balance-feeling trail bike. Carbon DT Swiss wheels and 29 by 2.35 Maxxis Forecaster tires round out the package. Retail is $52.99 US. Okay, so how does it ride? really well actually. The handling is sharp, despite a slack 66 degree head angle, and it's really stable at speed, quickly carving its way down tight, twisty single track. Part of it is definitely the extremely low standover and center of gravity, making the bike feel very quick and fast, tight turns, and sweeping transitions. Despite a 27.5 pound complete bike weight, it pedaled and handled like a nimble 120 light trail bike but deliver that extra 10 millimeters of travel to get me out of trouble on the big stuff. YT wanted a suspension that ramped up to give the bike a sense of pop and keep it riding high in the travel. This meant I spent a little more time dialing in the correct air pressure to get the right mix of small bump compliance over repetitive routes and still leave enough cushion for landing. Once I found the sweet spot, the bike came to life. I really can't overstate how different the extremely low design of this bike makes it feel whipping through the forest, and the meaty tires make it easy to push the corners really hard. YT says they gave the bike a little anti-squat, which also helps keep it riding higher in the travel when you're pedaling hard. Too much anti-squat can cause a bike's suspension to resist movement when, say, you're hammering through rough terrain. Obviously you want the suspension to maintain its ability to compress and track the ground, even when you have to power through a rock garden or something. And I think YT struck the right balance here. The Izzo scoots up the climbs without losing traction and without feeling mushy or bobbing with every pedal strip. It's this balance that makes me think the Izzo would do just fine without a remote lockout, which would have let me use different grips. In short, it's a bike that handles and climbs like a smaller bike but it absorbs big hits and drops so well, you'd think it has more travel than it does. One last little feature worth mentioning is the included custom oversized 28 ounce Fidlock water bottle, which snaps into place on the integrated magnetic holder on the down tube. Hey, thanks a ton for watching. If you like this review and you want more great bike reviews for road, mountain, cyclocross, gravel bikes, and a ton of other killer components, 
hit subscribe, hit like. If you got questions about this one, you can head over to bikerumor.com and check out the full post where we'll have more photos, the actual weights for this model that we tested, and a lot more tech info, plus a link to the original story that has like the claimed weights and pricing and everything for all the different ISO models in YT's lineup. Uh, thanks a ton for watching. Now, either check out some of these other great videos we got going on or close down YouTube and just go ride.